my greetings to all of you. Hopefully you can see and hear me well. Are we all ready? Is everything okay? If yes, then let's move on to the next slide. Let's get started. My name is Maria Antonenka, and this is the second year I've been together with you introducing blockchain technologies into our company, but into the lives and practice of every partner as the blockchain and cryptocurrencies are a very complicated and comprehensive theme. And many partners are hesitant to get training, although we, as the Academy of Private Investor, brings together all the people to educate them, to make them financially literate. Next slide, please. And let's repeat it once again for those partners who joined us quite recently. We will repeat what many of you know quite well already that throughout 2020, we created our blockchain called Crypto Unit. And there, there are four tokens, World CIU Security Token, that is a digital share. Another token called CIU, which is today our technical interchange token, and it, it is equal one to one to world CIU. And on the eve of the launch of the exchange and trading, many traders, by the way, are getting ready for this very active trading when world CIU token will be sold by the UGP group at the price of 35, 40 cents with the Crypto unit token could be bought at the exchange at 20, 30 cents, and they're still interchanged, interexchanged. And therefore, you can buy CIU at a bit lower price and convert them into world CIUs. And we do expect a good price rally for our technical token, that is UNTB token. And compared to blockchain, EOS-based uh, blockchain, its price today is two US dollars, whereas our UNTB could be bought at the exchange or you can get it after staking and the initial price is only one cent. Therefore, there is a good potential for the price, goes, uh, price grow, growth for UNTB. So there is no space to go down, only going up. And the fourth one is stablecoin USDU. This is the analog to US, USD. This is a measurement unit. And for instance, in our uh, back offices, the measurement unit is units, whereas here at the exchange on blockchain, there will be the, the USDU equal to one US dollar. And what else do you need to remember and bear in mind is that the total number of CRU, CIU and World CIU is 40 billion, 35 billion of CIU and 45 of World CIU. And many partners who received CIUs in 2019, 2020, they already see unblocking, whereas World CIU tokens will be uh, blocked for 365 days and then they will be unblocked. And in many chats, I receive the question why the unblocking is not in process. There is still there is still uh, some challenges and I want to explain it to everyone that unblocking of 1.5% uh, 
or unblocking of the reward tokens under the marketing plan for which 540 days already passed, but you don't see them in the back office. Since in the back office, everything is done manually, the IT developers need to design software to unblock it, and we decided not to do it. And as there are another few days left until we launch the crypto wallets and blockchain, and the release or the uh, unblocking of these tokens will be under the marketing plan will be there. So don't expect if 540 days passed and you expect for the unblocking inside the back office, so it will be done on blockchain. And the way the, we migrate to crypto wallet, you enter your back office, mycryptounit.com back office, you will see a button there to generate my key for crypto wallet. And as soon as you get this key, all your crypto units, your uh, CIU token point will be migrated to blockchain wallet. And there you see the process of unblocking. This is where it goes to say. 10,000 CIUs received as a gift from the company and one year, one year and a half passed and after pressing this key on your, in your crypto wallet, you will see that your 10,000 CIUs, a part of it will be with the status available. And I will do my best by early February to make a demonstration video how it is done as at present we are making the last changes, the last adjustments to actually make this video with no errors. I wanted to show it today, but then I noticed one more error and asked IT guys to correct it. And quite likely tomorrow it will be available. But look, all these errors, as programmers say, are in front line. And this in front end, so where you can see some typos. There was a typo instead of United States of America where the blockchain nodes are located, United States was spelled not as United, but United. So this spelling mistake, a designer made a typo, but we cannot actually accept such a crypto wallet with these typos and some arrows and mistakes and we are in a search of these errors to avoid some uh, trouble. So we are troubleshooting everything. And as soon as it's done, we will make a training video for you with the explanation of how the crypto wallet looks like and which functionalities it has. And some say that Locking was received twice, unblocking was received once. So look, everything pertaining to unblocking will be from the end of the crypto wallet because you cannot do anything to your CIU token points in the back office. Why should we uh, complicate the life of our programmers? We are busy with synchronization with the transfer of data to uh, blockchain migration process when from the databases of the back offices all this data is migrated to blockchain and at present we are at the stage of testing and crypto wallet creation next slide please staking bonuses we will discuss it yes we have unlocked cius and locked CIUs. As soon as we get access to crypto wallets, we can choose to stake on blockchain 
in the wallet and the released CIUs could be sent to the exchange. Pertaining to staking programs, those staking pro programs in our CIU back office, uh, you paid for your membership in the VIP club and you staked. And all the interests under the staking program, uh, on the 31st, all the stakings will be seized. And starting from the 31st of January, it will take another two, three days to accrue all your interests under staking. To say you uh, sign staking on the 10th of December or in June, July, so on the 10th of any month. And the 10th of January came and you should have received your interest under the staking on the 10th of January. There are those who got them and those who didn't get it. And this uh, interest that you haven't received for the full month, you will get them. But I'd like to explain the way our back office operates. It's not blockchain. It's not a smart contract. So the difference between blockchain wallets and smart contracts and our back offices and why are we talking about blockchain continuously that we desperately need it. A difference of the smart contract from the back office is that once a programmer programs the behavior of the token that this token requires 30 days after to be released or accrued under the staking program and no other interventions manual interventions are required the smart contract will monitor its it on its own whereas in the back office programmers develop software so they develop some scripts and they select the fil uh, filter out the users with the staking programs for them to accrue their interests and in case there is an error in the script or they filter out everyone with an interest of 2.5 or 1.5 percent totally forgetting about those with an interest of one percent this is purely human factor so there are those who got their interests and those who didn't and we need to double check whether it was because of human error or because of some technical mal malfunction. And they actually do these accruals and the staking program, not fully manually, but through this process, through this script. And this script verifies each account with an intention to accrue the uh, due interest, but it may miss something. The computer may miss something. Therefore, we will double check that all the accruals are done as they should be on the 10th, 15th, 20th, on the date of your staking is due for you to receive your, accru your accurate accruals. And on the 31st of January, the staking will be closed. And even in case you received your accrual in January today, Today is the 28th of January. Then by the end, in the end of the month, three days of January, if you staked the last moment on the 25th December, so you will get your accrual for the full month. So meaning that for January, you may receive two accruals for the start of this January and the remaining part, not full months of January. As regards our partners who staked under Eventy program, we were a bit upset that tokens were kept for a few months and you didn't earn anything. Andrei Havratov made a decision that everyone with the signed Eventy staken once 8% will be accrued in early February. After the 31st of January, under the EVNT program, there will be a single time accrual of 8%. I believe this is the good news for those 
who staked under this program. When we migrate to blockchain all our CIU tokens, there you will get this 70 staking program, but it will start generating uh, income three months after. So before we said within the six months, no income under this staking, whereas now on blockchain, 70 staking will generate income uh, after the third month in month four and automatically all the stakings will be closed. You don't need to actually terminate something manually. They will be terminated automatically and you will get your accruals and your uh, deposited uh, staking will be uh, brought back to your balances. Next slide, please. I believe this is the one about staking. Yes, that's right. On blockchain wallet, these types of staking, CIU for CIU, unlocked CIUs, they will be available. And deposit of 1,000, this is a pure example. If a person, to say, has 10,000 unlocked CIUs, then he may stake, uh, make different stakings, uh, with 1,000 each, and then in the end of the month, he sees that the price goes up, then he can sell the first 1,000. And uh, in another three months or six months, he may sell another batch. And this way, you may split up all your unlocked CIU between all those types of staking we offer. So there was another question about Eventy staking. There was a question about the duration. If within six months there is no accrual, so there was some misunderstanding. Look, on blockchain wallet, as soon as you stake Eventy, you see that it operates for 36 months, but the first accrual will start from April. Now is January. February, March, and April, they are empty. And then after April, you will see in your crypto wallet that these 36 months, the income generation period will start in April. And the first income to be generated or received in May, it will be indicated clearly there. And throughout these 36 months, you will get 8%, not 30, 33, but 33 months in total. This is the period of income generation under staking. But the first three months, no income received. And in months four, you get your income. And this 70 2020 staking will be available for a very short period of time. Andrei Havratov wants it to make available only for two weeks, not when uh, all the tokens, 3 billion tokens on CIU stake are seized, but we may deactivate this event is staking and activate it at, upon our discretion. We as a company, have the right to administer the staking programs and it will be a mechanism to impact to influence the price if after the launch of trading someone wants to sell tokens at a lower price but partners who understand the staking crypto enthusiasts globally from around the globe they will see this availability of this uh, program with 8% a month, they can actually rally or uh, uh, bully the uh, prices. And when they know that it will be deactivated quite soon, to say one week after, it will speed up the demand for unlocked CIU at the exchange. So therefore, this trigger of staking is a trigger of the increased demand for unlocked CIUs. Maybe the staking for three months, we may say only today 
please hurry up to stake for three months. We will activate and disactivate them depending on the conditions and the evolution on the market and the exchange. This is an incentive to actually uh, skyrocket the demand for token with this incredible interest offered because most tokens uh, proof of stake tokens, the maximum return is 36% per annum. Whereas in our case, we have 36% per year, the 20 mo 12 months program. But if it is 18 months program, then the return is 24% a year, but Kolkadot has 26%, which staking of us could be compared to this 24 a year, only 70, because it's cooler, 8% a month. And by this 70, 2020 20 staking, we may influence the demand. What else should I tell you? Look, in this table, out of 10,000 CIUs, we have 6,000 to be staked, 1,000 to be sent for UNTB token generation. As said before, the price will go up. And how much do we have left? 3,000 CIU out of 10,000. And this 30%, I will keep them to trade freely in them at the exchange but not to sell them in one go, but in parts. So at a bit lower price than a bit higher and higher, and not to sell everything in one go in one day at very low price. So the timing of exchange and blockchain, we will discuss it because in the end, there is a slide with the roadmap. I will update you on this, but I want to stress this incredible types of staking only we offer. No other plot platform, according to my information and the white papers I looked through, so none of them offer such promising staking that you may stake for a short term, for a medium term, for a longer term with low or a high yield, and this uh, offer, our offer, is very unique for crypto enthusiasts from around the world. Let's move on. Yes, 3 billion, you will see it in the, you will see it in the section staking that 3 billion CIU will cease quite soon. And this is another mechanism to improve the demand for un unlocked CIU. Well, so how... How is going the exchange trading the exchange going to happen? So on the left, you can see different cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, Ethereum, you see the diamond shaped uh, symbol, it's Ethereum. Then the T in the green circle is USDT, Tether, and the uh, blue coin with a dollar inside, it's USDC, it's the USD coin. We have our own payment system, global unit pay, and uh, this is the money from uh, and money on fiat money on Visa and Mastercards. So those who would like to buy CRU tokens and UNTB tokens, they make a deposit on the exchange in Bitcoin, Ethereum, Tether, USDC, or through our payment system. Those people who registered they can transfer, make a transfer in dollars, fiat dollars, or through their bank card. But, but when they do it, they, your national currency will be converted according to the current US dollar exchange rate. So this is, I'm this is for people who want to buy USDU, our stable coin. And then that USDU will be traded in a currency pair, dollar for, CRU dollar for UNTB 
and uh, it works the other way around too. People who want to sell CRU and UNTB, they just uh, put up orders into currency pairs, USDU for UNTB. And um, since they were topping up uh, in uh, Bitcoin on USDU or through our payment system or through the bank card. Similarly, the other way, if they want to withdraw mon money from the exchange, you exchange USDU into the currency that you prefer. It can be Bitcoin, it can be Ethereum, it can be Tether or USDC, or immediately to our payment system, global unit pay into fiat money or directly to your bank card. I would like to point out here right away that not all of the cards will be available for withdrawal and it might not come up in the first days of the opening of the exchange because there is a whole procedure for compliance and acquiring. So it is easy to top up your wallet on the exchange, but it is uh, sometimes difficult to move money from, but it is way easier to move money through global unit pay. It's like moving money from a wallet to another wallet. And of course, the Visa and MasterCard commission fees are quite high, 6.5%, 7%. That's the amount of money Visa and MasterCard charge you and all other, because there are a lot of intermediate banks. So it is most profitable, profitable either to top up and withdraw in cryptocurrency or use the global unit pay payment system. We already discussed at the previous webinar that we'll have to talk and think about taxes. Let's take a look at three services. And the next um, slide, we have coinly.io. You can take a picture, make a screenshot and take a look which countries are supported by this service. It's the United States, United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Sweden, Norway, Finland, the entire Europe, Singapore, Korea. Russia is not here, obviously, because Russia adopted the law on cryptocurrency this year on the 1st of January, and the tax forms haven't yet been uh, even developed, but we have an entire year ahead of us. It's very good that we didn't start trading last year. Otherwise, we would have to submit the tax reports on March or April this year already. So we have an entire year to get ready. We will together learn how to do it, how to fill in everything. So don't be panicky if you have to pay taxes because... But you still have to research the taxation laws in your country because we are a global company and we cannot keep track of the tax percentages in all the countries but when you use such services as this um, they have uh, the information for your countries let's move on to the next slide there is one more service it's blockbit.io if you don't have a lot of transactions, it does it for free. But if you want to be a trader, if you want to move around lots of currencies between different wallets, then you'll have to pay 199 euros. And there is a, uh, it's a paid package. And there is a third service called cointracking.info. I uh, read quite a lot of information on that website, Russia, at least is present there. So most probably I'm going to use this service. And as soon as our exchange is launched, we will together with a technical team that is now taken over from the Belarusian team, our exchange will develop um, this module which will integrate into one of those services. So directly there in the exchange, you can pair your account with, let's say, cointracking.info. It's API key. So this service will collect the data for you at what price you bought CRU, sold CRU, 
bought and sold, etc. UNTB, and at the end of the year, they will generate a report for you. It's automated. The dollars that you topped up your accounts with and euros that you withdrawn, withdrew. So all that automation system will generate a full table or spreadsheet of your income and expenses. So if you buy something expenses, if you sell something, it's income. And then the difference between your buy and sell, this is, if it's positive, it's your profit and you'll have to pay taxes on it. And there are a lot of different tricks how to minimize that profit. For example, at the end of the year, on the 31st of December, you buy Bitcoin for the entire amount that you traded. And uh, here you are, you have no profit. So for the taxation authorities, uh, they calculate uh, your taxes in fiat, whereas the crypto is exchange at the current exchange rate at the time of the transaction. So you can compare it to the purchase of shares. If you buy shares, it's your expenses, you don't pay taxes. If you sell shares, the broker at the stock exchange will check the difference, the buy and sell price, and will charge the income tax from you. It's a general common stock market. The taxation agents are exchanges themselves, stock exchanges, whereas crypto exchanges, they are not tax agents. They will not charge taxes for you because you can withdraw your income in Bitcoin, in any other cryptocurrency. It's a, a service that helps you generate that spreadsheet. And at the end of the year, you can dispose of your assets in whatever way you want. You can optimize your difference, your income, the delta. So yes, the crypto exchange um, does not pay taxes for you. So that's why we have to generate reports ourselves. So uh, quite a lot of information is going your way right now. I'll tell you about global unit pay, our payment system, our exchange, Unitex, and verification through global pass. Let me have a sip of water first. I think our interpreters have to catch a breath too. Over here, I have three pages of printed reasons 17 items why verification is sometimes rejected at the global pass. Someone takes goes through the verification really fast, in two hours, literally. Mainly it's US or Europe residents who are accustomed to online banking. And some people, someone is saying, I'm waiting for the verification for so such a long time from the 11th of January. And those reasons out there I'm going to read them out to you. Those are the most frequent reasons why people cannot go through the verification. Maybe you will hear some of those items that might apply to you and you will understand what, what is the reason for not being verified. Okay, the first reason is when the person filled in their first and last name and date of birth, but they made a mistake. In their passport, there is a different date of birth or the name is spelled in a different way, just one letter, then automatically verification will fail. So you have to attentively fill in every field without haste. We notice that many of our partners are hasting and they try to verify without reading the guidelines really carefully. It's, it's a, they behave as if they were late, you know. And at first, you, you better get ready, read everything, and only then you register. And when you're 100% ready, then you can verify in uh, literally two hours. So the first reason is you spelled your name incorrectly. 
Another reason is that people upload the documents that are expired or do not fit the requirements, six months. So if we're talking about a foreign passport or an ID card or any other document in addition, except passport with an expiry date, then uh, it should be at least valid for another six months. So if uh, your passport expires in three months, then this document does not fit. You need to have an ID document, passport included, that is will be still valid for six months after the current date. Or people try to upload expired documents, like literally expired. We have such partners who say, oh, well, I have somewhere my foreign passport. Uh, they Two years ago, that passport expired. Let me try and upload that passport. No, it won't go through. Only the valid documents will be accepted. In some countries, we have such a document as ID card. In Europe, in the United States, those ID cards have the front face and the back page. And people upload only the front part where the picture is, the photo is. And they think that the reverse side is not really useful, necessary, and then don't scan and upload that part at all. And this is a mistake. So if you have an ID card, even if on the other side you think there is no valid or useful information, even if it's empty, you still have to scan and upload it because the system gives you the opportunity to upload two uh, scans for the ID card. So bad video quality. I think this is the most frequent problem issue. When people sit before their cameras with bad lighting, Behind there is a portrait of someone else like Putin or whatever the current prime minister or president is or some other photo behind you. And you, you try to make the video take of your face and the camera catches not only you, but that person's behind you, that person's face behind you. Or for example, they try to take a picture while there are two or three people there and the camera could not recognize the person who is going through the verification, whether the person is sitting in front of the camera or someone standing close to that person. So this is also very important when you're making um, video takes of your face so that no one is behind you. Kids, your husbands, so that there are no pictures behind you. And it's better to use your smartphone camera because may most computers have really weak cameras and the video does not simply meet the criteria. So what next? what's next? Let's see other reasons here. Sometimes there are cases when passport or the ID card, you are trying to picture, you take a picture from the camera and uh, you think that the image is good, but there might be some, uh, you know, light reflection, or you might be holding it with your fingers and uh, covering part of the passport or the shadow falls on the passport. So the best recommendation is that you draw, draw close the passport to the camera and below there is a script inscription like upload. So take a picture vertically from your phone, very good picture of your passport or your ID card from so this side, this side, so that there are no fingers or hands on it. And it's good that, uh, and should be good. There should be no light reflections or anything on it. Or scan it if you have a scanning device and then upload it. Don't try to do it a hundred times by moving the passport closer to the camera. You can do it once, but do it in a good way. And I assure you, if you upload the quality picture of the passport, it will be verified 100% better. So we are clear with this. There are also cases 
when uh, the picture in the passport is photoshopped, the computer diagnostics will recognize it right away. So I'm running out of battery here, or hopefully it's not me, maybe one of our managers here, because I see this battery low sign. I'm sorry, guys. So it's not mine, I have 100%. Okay. There are cases when a document has uh, photoshopped pictures in it. And the global pass will see it. They will realize that the uh, photo on the passport was photoshopped. Well, it's a rare case, but it still happens sometimes when people Photoshop their pictures. Okay, what's next? Sometimes they upload Russian passports, but I think we've already dealt with it. Passports that don't have the Latin letters on them. This does not fit. And another common error is when people confirm their address, address and they think that they just a part of the document will be sufficient. They take a picture of it and that's it. For example, a person opens their PC where they have banking account and they can see the name and address and they just take the, take the picture on this, from the screen of the PC with bank, online banking and just take a picture of it saying, look, this is my address, but this is not a document you need to order if the bank statement or the um, big certificate that you have the, as if you were making documents for a visa. And this is quite a, should be a serious document with the stamp of the bank, with the bank details, city address of the bank. Um, it's a PDF usually. And it should be uploaded entirely, not just a piece of it. Like, look, I took a picture of it and no, it doesn't work. Or if it's a utility bill, telephone bill or whatever, it should be an entire document. The way it is sent to you, to your email, the way you should picture, take a picture of, of it in its entirety, not just the part where your name and surname are. Well, fingers and hands I mentioned already. So those are the main um, issues that we come across. Not all the corners are visible, not the entire document was uploaded or bad quality of the video from the ID document. So you take a picture of it and you upload it. So those are the recommendations. And look, as far as the exchange is concerned, unit exchange is the exchange that works in the European regulation as the global unit pay. It's a, um, the requirements are quite harsh here to verification. And I think we are one of the few companies that in crypto industry goes through quite a um, harsh verification of their users. It's no coincidence that we decided to register our token in the Security and Exchange Commission. It is no co coincidence that we decided to create our company, register this company in Switzerland. This was all done for us to be respected in the entire world. If we stayed in G. Virgin Islands jurisdiction, then we shouldn't have a very, we shouldn't be forced to verify anyone. We would just raise money without any verification. Bitcoin in Bitcoin. And then someone will say that this Bitcoin is stolen or the source of income is weapons and terrorism. No matter which source of this money has, but we take the journey of law abiding business to become a well, a, a good reputation and reputable company in the world. 
for them not to point at us their fingers and saying that this is scam. Don't take your money there. So we are in a standby mode by now. But as soon as you learn how to go through this verification process in Global Unit Pass and train your partners to do it, every month at the global scale, we will take one step up, one step up in our self-esteem. And when someone complains, who is this system made for? I have no, I don't have a foreign passport. I don't have this. Look, you complicate my life. But firstly, I believe we complicate our lives because we are in legal field. We are law abiding and over the last years none mlm business can boast and say that they have it's it's their own payment system and step by step not overnight but step by step we will earn learn how to register firstly a leader who will be followed up by his partners he will help his partners register and at the same time, this global pass system also improves. They faced that bad quality pictures and photos made by laptop cameras. And now they are making an application with a QR uh, code. You can take a picture uh, from your smartphone because smartphones generally have a good quality cameras. And every day, day after day, the whole process of verification will get faster and faster. Well, regarding those partners who received a letter that the verification is denied, your account is frozen, don't try to enter your back office again. Why did this happen? When you complete a questionnaire, there is this form. And this form includes the data about the, so, the source of income and why do you need this open account in the payment system. And you'd better indicate for personal expenses. And it may have include a field about the politicians, whether you are or your relatives are some uh, political officials. And in our instructions, we indicate, you should indicate, no, I'm not a politician. I'm not a political official. I'm not an official at all. But people are inattentive. They may take it, yes, uh, to actually complete this process faster. And if you tick the field that you are a politician, you as a public servant may not do a do your business and this is the way your registration is denied therefore please be very careful 50 percent of our partners with the documents already submitted they are verified and as you say starting from the 10th of december uh, there is something frozen please enter again maybe you need to attach some documents again but for those partners who are blocked, please call our support team, our support service, the support team of the Academy of Private Investor. They will bring together all these requests and complaints and Global Unit Pay will finalize the process for those uh, for those partners who are in a standby mode, but those who are blocked, they will be in the end of the queue. So first of all, they will let through those who didn't upload the documents, who do it for the first time, and then they will review and process repeatedly those that are blocked, and you may be in this line of those waiting on a waiting list. Well, now there is a surprise for you. 
and the roadmap in the end. Well, before I tell you about the time frame of our exchange and blockchain, please watch a video made by our marketing agency. The world transforms rapidly. Blockchain technologies open up new opportunities. Switzerland is one of the advanced countries with crypto economy. UGP Group offers world crew token security registered with SCC, uh, SC, SCC in the USA. World crew is a digital share, a share in the global investment portfolio. World crew token offers its uh, members four types of income. The first one is taking placement of world CIU on crypto wallet to get a return in UNTB. UNTB is a technical token that gives you access to the uh, capacity and the computation capacity or net speed. The second is the bonus under the loyalty program, 5% of the, uh, of the overall token sale monthly. And this type of income is available until October 2021. The third one is profit bonus, monthly accrued to the uh, owners of the World CIU in proportion to the income of the uh, income generated by the company from different investment sectors. A profit bonus is paid in USDU. This is a stable coin of the company, and every USDU token is backed by fiat US dollar. And the fourth type, which is appraised, and the value of the portfolio uh, skyrockets, and each share of the uh, of these uh, tokens increase. So the assets that back World CIU are appraised by the Crow International Company to worth several billions with the starting price of World CIU of 30 cents. So the main se sectors of investments are basal, data mining, uh, diamonds, gold mining, catering, legal servi services, and retail e um, estate, including others. Become a co-owner of the global investment portfolio. Create your new reality. Did you like the video? Yes, it's cool. And we are preparing the PR campaign for UGP Group World CIU token for us to post some articles, video blogs with the reviews and outlooks to make sure that this journey was not in vain to enter the market with our amazing tokens. And as I said before, on the 31st of January, the staking will be seized. And we believe that by the third, approximately by the third or the fifth, the latest, all this staking will be accrued. First of all, we will give you a link to register at the exchange and I will explain that those people who registered at the exchange last November, these old registrations will not be valid anymore. We do not transfer the old database because of two reasons. As many people were in a hurry and took some referral links from no one knows who, and then, so there were people complain that they were eager to get some response from their sponsor and the sponsor uh, let them down and there were a lot of misunderstanding there was a mess and we are now experienced and we know we do know that there is no need to be uh, to be in rush and therefore please register under either under the link of your sponsor or the person who will really support you and help you. So at the exchange, we did not register. We simply verified to your email, you received a link and you confirmed verification with no registration, real registration at the exchange. So it will be done from scratch. And we expect that by the 8th of February, give me a second, please the registration 
for the exchange approximately will be opened on the 8th of February. And then as soon as all the stakings are accrued from the 5th to the 8th of February, there is the personal profile synchronization with the blockchain. And if it goes smooth with no hiccups, then approximately on the 10th of February, you will get your keys for your crypto wallets and you start the process of transferring uh, your CIU tokens to your crypto wallet. At the exchange, as I said before, there will be verification like uh, through the global unit pay payment system with the only difference for the exchange that you upload your passport video but you don't fill out the form, the questionnaire. And I will explain why. Why do we need this repeated verification at the exchange? Look, you may have registered. I have registered in Global Unit Pay Payment System. Everyone knows my name. On the internet, you can find my details, my birthday, and you can assume that someone under my name may enter the exchange and put a tick saying, pretending to be Maria Antonenka. I verified through Global Unit Pay. Please register me at the exchange. And how can exchange, exchange officers can believe your words? They should see you in the camera that you are the same personality that already has been verified through global unit pay and you are the same person therefore there will be this repeated process with your videos and pictures attached because otherwise under your names some other strangers may enter the exchange but it will be simpler at the exchange as there won't be this long lasting questionnaire to complete. Why, for what reasons, I, whether you are a political officer or not politician or not public servant or not. And I believe that by the 15th or the 20th of February, if we are blessed, most of you will have verified at the exchange and if you haven't registered with the payment system yet, don't wait for the exchange to open. Please make your card in the payment system Global Unit Pay and you will save up a lot of time because otherwise it will happen that we are all sitting idle waiting for the exchange but when the time comes that you need to transfer your money from the back offices to the wallets you are not verified who will you complain that you failed to verify promptly i don't know why but in the russian room i lost my slides Guys, can you see the slides? My PowerPoint? Yes, we can actually. Well, I don't know the reason why it happened. Now I am in Vilnius, Lithuania, and there are two teams working for us that will maintain and administer our blockchain and exchange. And we are running the final tests for the exchange. The test is almost done. There are two tiny errors, but they are not material. They won't impact the trading and the exchange. In terms of blockchain, there was some criticism by Swiss company that was hired as our auditor and they will support blockchain and they actually find some discrepancies in architecture as we have a very comp comprehensive tokenomics including staking, blocking, unblocking and this synchronization with the back offices but over the last two days 
these two large errors detected were fixed. They are in the blockchain architecture and the, it requires final improvements and developments. And we see so far no material shortfalls or impediments that impede or hamper our launch of the exchange. I am like a bridge between the team of developers from Belarus and the team of our auditors of blockchain for them to detect any errors. So actually, Andrei Havratov in, instructed me to stay with them until the very launch. So uh, actually almost suffocate them to make sure that they do it promptly and timely. Every day I uh, stalk, stalk them to and chase them to make sure that it's done efficiently. So hopefully we will be compliant with the timing indicated maybe a few days of delays but to date we see no global impediments or challenges that could prevent us or could prevent our plan to make sure that the architecture operates like a swiss watch hopefully dear friends you liked today's webinar it was useful and informative. This video I played before is available in Russian on YouTube, but in another few days, you will get it available in English. And from English, our team will, our team of interpreters will translate it into Spanish, Italian, but with the main voicing in English. So there will be the subtitles in your languages, in the relevant languages, but with the main voicing in English. Well, thank you very much for your time, for your attendance of this webinar. Hopefully you got responses to those answers you still had open. So let's uh, keep our fingers crossed. So please support and assist us. It helps a lot when you don't complain in the chats. You are not negative, but quite opposite. You are grateful, thankful to leaders, to Andrei Havratov, to our programmers. This in inspires and encourages us a lot. And together with you, we will launch our mega super project and the entire world will learn how great and powerful we are.